Welcome to the Practice Podcast, conversations probing the nature of practice. I'm your host, Dave Firon. This is a conversation with Judy Cooper, Assistant Executive Director of the Glenholm Devereaux School in Washington, Connecticut. Take a look at their webpage. It's an impressive school dedicated to children who have learning challenges with wonderful results. Judy has been so much involved in that school over nearly 40 years that I think of her as the Glen Home School. So as you hear Judy speak today, you'll be hearing this voice, the sensibilities, the passion, and even the love of this unique preparatory school, Judy Cooper. Well, today, the conversation is with Judith Cooper, whom I think of as Judy. I've known her for a long while. And she is part and parcel of an extraordinary school, the Glenholm School, part of the Devereux system. And in inducing Judy, I want to say that I'm guessing that her practice is the Glenholm School. Now, here's what I mean. While she's worked there for a number of years, she has basically put most of her life into that school, starting way back when uh, before college and then all the way through to this moment. Every moment of that school's life has had a Judy Cooper signature in it, and it has also shaped and formed Judy Cooper. So this is the Glen Home School, a.k.a. Judy Cooper. What do you think of that introduction, Judy? Am I, am I a little bit over the top on that? <laughs> yeah, I think so, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me, right? <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Um, it, it has been. Uh, I'll be coming up on 40 years in... Uh, May of 2021, and so a great deal of my life, uh, I've kind of grown up uh, at Glen Home, if you would, professionally, uh, especially uh, in, in regards to being exposed to a lot of different areas of the program and, and uh, watching change happen, uh, which is really, you know, change management is good, and, uh, and in in the uh, process, we've helped you know thousands and thousands of of young people get on the path to finding success in their life, and uh, and as well as the families uh, that we serve. So it's been a remarkable experience, and one that I wouldn't trade for anything. Uh, that's for sure. So uh, so thank you. So many people move from organizational affiliation, organizational affiliation, what may be constant is what you become good at. Uh, and therefore, the most conventional sense of practice is, this is what I do, because I'm very good at it. And you're good at many things there, you've worn a number of hats. But in your case, that f nearly 40 years is like growing, I can't even think of it, uh, the, the right- like Growing a tree. Words. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a tree. It's a tree of life. But in, in, the, in the best sense of it, when you started there, uh, it was primarily a school do dedicated to kids with emotional uh, challenges. Is that pretty much the way it was? Mm -hmm. And all the way through time, it's always been devoted to helping children and their families who are not finding life as easy as the norm as the many, they have challenges, they need and want 24 hour uh, life on that wonderful campus of yours out there in Washington, Connecticut. So you have seen literally thousands of students come through. Mm -hmm. And I've been an admirer for uh, as long as I've known you when you were starting when you were my student. So as Glen Home has changed this is a hard question to answer, but what the heck? How have you changed over these years? Well, um, 
I think I've uh, certainly developed a lot of skills, you know, through through the years and and leadership. Uh, and you talk about practice; it it continues to evolve. Leadership isn't uh, a once and for all concept. Uh, you don't get it. You don't just package it up and say, "I'm a leader." Uh, it, it changes all the time, mm -hmm. and um, and I think through the years, you really do begin to discover that there's there's just so many multiple facets to leadership. And when we come to a time like we are right now with COVID-19, uh, just when you think, geez, I've been doing this for almost 40 years, I think I could, you know, answer a lot of these questions pretty well. Um, COVID-19 comes along and, and all of a sudden everything is new and yet it's not new it's just new in a different way and and i was reading an article a couple days ago in the harvard business review and the title of the article was when crisis strikes um lead with humanity Ooh, and it nice it, it caught my attention and uh, there was an interesting quote in there that uh, this gentleman, the writer was George Saunders, uh, and he had this great analogy. And, and uh, so his quote was, we've slipped on ice, but haven't hit the pavement yet. We're <laughs> caught in a suspended state between losing control and feeling the full impact. And I thought, wow, that's, that's really uh, exactly how I think I feel every day when I get up. I feel like I'm suspended in air. I kind of know the pavement's coming or the rubber hits the road and we have to educate the kids and we have to stay in contact with the families and we have to maintain our, our employees and keep them safe and healthy uh, and keep their spirits lifted through this process. Uh, and yet at the same time, I have to also realize that I don't have all the answers and that I'm just as human as the next person <laughs> and we're all going through these struggles together. So we all have the same fears of whether or not, you know, we're going to remain healthy or, or God forbid, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to, you know, touch something and, and, you know, the next situation that happens could find us, you know, very ill we have to look at, you know, our family situations and people have parents and, and, and whatnot who they're concerned about. There may be, you know, elderly situations or grandparents that, that you know, employees are struggling with from the viewpoint of not being able to, to see them. There may be economic issues with, you know, meeting uh, the needs of the family now that all the mm -hmm. children are home and, you know, juggling work and, and whatnot. So, so it, it really is quite fluid. Uh, and through it all, we, we have to move forward and provide a service and, and provide excellent customer service to our students and families and, and yet maintain continuity of, of program for our students that we typically did in person and now we're doing through distance learning. And so it's, it's been really interesting. So I definitely feel like that we, we've slipped on the ice, but we just, we haven't hit the pavement yet, but we know it's there. <laughs> so, um, so I thought That's that a, was, that, that, that was, was really great, interesting. Right, right on. And, and most likely he wrote that um, before the pandemic really became such a huge part of our, our daily lives. So uh, he was anticipating right. and we always anticipate crisis. But as I was listening mm -hmm. to Judy, I was hearing in my mind the Glen Home School speaking because you so fluidly moved from concern for the parents, concern for the kids, maintaining continuity, keeping everything going. You're certainly not completely tunneled and specialized in one small part of that school. In so many ways, you don't just speak for the school as one of its senior leaders. You speak as the school to me. And the notion of humanity, to me, was what distinguished the Glen Home School and you from the very beginning. While you have a wonderful facility and you have all the tools and techniques that have been invented over the years, your humanity and the humanity of your colleagues, it seems to me to be its signature. 
or again, am I just imagining? So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, as, as I think about the years of, of Glenn home and, and things that we've brought to the table that mm-hmm. I think have helped our staff and our students, you know, uh, long, a uh, long time ago, right. We had, uh, adopted the, uh, the values, and, uh, you know, our values program, which really, you know, kind of centered and, and became the core of our, our work culture, which in order for our students to learn about values like respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, honesty, caring, uh, giving back to the community, as, as we were trying to teach the students that we all know that, you know, the best way to teach is to model that, that behavior. So, so the values right. really did shape our, our, our work culture and, and it really spoke to humanity and obviously in many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, since then, we have also adopted uh, servant leadership and mm. the servant leadership principles of being that organization that puts people first. Um, mm. having people, leaders, and, and, and everyone, and you don't have to be a leader in order to be involved in servant leadership, but having people, uh, provide good communication, be compassionate collaborators, be able to think about systems so that, uh, a good program runs no matter who is running the program. So developing good systems so that there's continuity and predictability in the, in the teaching. Certainly hiring people with person of character, being able to, you know, make sure that they're leading with moral authority and not leading because they have the title or because there's a benefit in it for, for the individual, uh, but leading with moral mm-hmm. authority, you know, in a way that, again, puts people first, making the right decisions for the right reasons. Certainly being able to have foresight and think mm. about the future and what, and what that means and how you can shape that to meet the needs of the students, but also, also the staff. Um, so, so I think the, the servant leadership, when I, when I was, you know, getting back to this article, one of the things that they talked about in this article was, you know, given this, this feeling of being suspended, right, and not totally sure of what's happening, um, one of the things they, they referred to is, is um, that leadership really needs to, especially at this point in time, be, be giving really good guidance uh, to their employees and, and good direction and reassuring them, but at the same time, having a, a, a balance, being pretty transparent to say, I don't mm-hmm. know, you know, what what is coming down the road, right? And we know that through watching the news every day, right? I mean, things change, there's there's new symptoms, there's new ways of, of managing um, social distancing and, and so on and so forth. So getting back to that servant leadership, it, it, it struck me as this is a great example of putting people first. You're, you're keeping them employed. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're working with them. You're providing them with guidance and, and direction as best you can, but you're also being very transparent. <laughs> you, you sometimes people can see your vulnerabilities because you just don't have all the answers, which is, is fine. I think that that, that really helps people to realize that we're all in this together. And it, it you know, it, it's the work of everyone uh, that makes things mm-hmm. th- the best that they can be. And so collaborating with, with people is definitely, um, you know, an important part of this. And, and I think personalizing the impact of, of what's happening, you know, Good point. Um, Good point. We, set up, we set up, so we have, we have some staff who are working from home and zooming in every day and and doing different things and we have some staff who are actually on campus working so how do you keep everyone connected you know and and making sure that we have really good communication so so we've set up uh zoom meetings where we have you know meetings at the beginning of the day just to find out what's happening and then coming back together at four o'clock in the afternoon and and making sure that 
We've tied up any loose ends between the morning and the afternoon, making sure that we have the needs of the families and the students met each day. Um, and, and also, you know, kind of having that foresight to say, oh, this happened today. We're going to have to really look at that system and see how we can improve upon that to make sure that, that um, things are working as best that they can. But we, we also have done a really kind of a fun thing that we do in the afternoon that's open to, to anyone, whether they're working on or off campus. Uh, and that is a, uh, it's a, a, it's a virtual lounge. And so it allows people to just- <laughs> The teacher's it, lounge. We it, <laughs> yeah, we call it a space to interface. And uh, so like that. people yeah. get on and, you know, they're, it's, it's very real, you know, the, the employees on and you can hear kids in the background and, things that are happening and, and really see what people are, are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And, it, and it's not work-related at this stage of the game. It's really more personal, you know? Oh, this is what's happening. And, and you know, people are just sharing things that they saw, or maybe they share pictures or something, you know, a, a mindfulness moment or, you know, so mm -hmm. they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're keeping it personal. So we have a, a little bit of both going on. And I, and I think that eases the tension of oh, yeah. being suspended yeah. in air and not hitting the pavement yet. You know, you're, you're, <laughs> you're really uh, collaborating together on, on both a personal and a professional level. Thinking of Glen Home no. and thinking of you and Glen Home being one in the same. And what you just said reminds me that the, I've come up to that campus several times over the years and Driving in, it's just exquisitely beautiful. It's in a native setting, Western Connecticut. Buildings aren't ostentatious at all, but they speak to welcome. They speak to where the kids can feel like they're at home when they're not at home. So the physical plant, which has had a lot of attention over the years and a lot of cost, isn't Glen Home School, is it? Nor what it is is what you're, you and your and your fellow Glen Homians are doing right now, some on campus, some virtually. You're keeping the school in mind. That's to me the ultimate way you're gonna hit when you do land, it'll won't you'll bounce and you'll be back on your feet. If you hadn't mm -hmm. if it was only a, a wonderful facility, if it was only a bunch of titles, uh, and, and there and there are many and, and so forth, it could it could not be what you will be in the next several years, integrated and committed. So what do you think about that? Glen Home School is more than a wonderful campus. This is true and it is beautiful, but uh, you're right. The people, uh, the people have to be the, the seeds of the program, right? I mean, they're the ones mm -hmm. that, that make things grow and uh, mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's really, um, uh, interesting to watch and, you know, even, even through all this, we have found ways to provide professional development, uh, during this time frame for all of our faculty. And, uh, so that's been, you know, really amazing. So things that, you know, might've been on the back burner um, and be like, well, you know, we, we definitely want to do this, but you know, we have this happening and this happening. The fluidity of what we're doing now is that everything is happening and, and it's just, it's different, but it is, it is really, uh, really coming along quite well. I think leadership and practice are, are definitely two different things and yet they have to come together so oh yes oh yes you know they 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 just yes you do the same things and you you have some real specific things that you do on a regular basis and and you have policies and procedures that guide your decision making but then mm -hmm. there's times where from a leadership perspective, all that goes out the window and, yep. and you are, you are creating and charting new territory. Um, but keeping those fundamental pr principles in place, just doing it a little bit differently. So that oh, takes good leadership to do that. Right. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, and one of the, uh, 
conjectures that Peter Vale and I have uh, recorded in earlier conversations is that leadership is a practice. In other words, it's theory put into action. It's a practice, but it's a practice like learning, which is a practice which supports every other practice, particularly mm -hmm. in times like this. If you have tried to lead from what you used to know worked, right. <laughs> it would flop. <laughs> You're right. Some, some, You're right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, at the least a technique level, you haven't left, yeah. lost the values. You've kept those right. sound, but right. The without those values, then, you know, trying, you know, now you're learning and, and you're putting to a test everything about the school and you in a way. And it's a, it's mm -hmm. a good test. Mm -hmm. It's like a stress test, <laughs> right? You know how they it, used to stress yeah. test bank. Right. Uh, yeah. And exactly. overall, you feel you talk about <laughs> when, yeah. when we were in class, it was the grist mill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's good to have someone remember some of my old syllogisms. <laughs> Let me try something out with you because this uh, particular way of thinking about practice was very, very important to Peter Vale. In fact, I'm reading it off uh, a slip uh, you, which he typed, and it, he always liked to use the comic sans. I'm not. It's a. It's a, it's an interesting kind of of font, font. but yeah, yeah. I see it and, it, and it and it brings back a lot of my memories of Peter. But this uh, is something that Chester Barnard, uh, the making, the functioning of the executive wrote in 1938. Feeling, judgment, sense, proportion, balance, appropriateness, These are the six words which describe practice to Peter Vale. These words are the doings of the practitioner. So here's Judy Cooper feeling. You feel the school. You feel, you obviously feel the plight of the, of the kids when they are in a troubled state. You feel the staff. Let's talk about feeling. What does it feel like, Judy? right now for you to be in this state of suspension for the school? Uh, well, I, I feel tremendous, tremendous pride and respect for our employees. I mm. am, I shouldn't be amazed because they are just amazing people to work alongside of. Uh, so, so it's not that I'm amazed, but to see what they have been able to do through this, through this time frame of uncertainty, and rise to the occasion the way they have, has been just a feeling of wanting to be in it every day because you you just know how hard everyone is working. And and it's it's a it's a feeling like people are are you know they're not like oh you know I don't want to work because I'm afraid I'm going to get sick. they're 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 like I want to be able to do this and if I can't be on grounds this is how I'm going to tackle you know this situation and and it's just been amazing the creativity the camaraderie it, it's 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 hands down just a, a tremendous feeling to be a part of that. I, I can't, I, I don't even know if I can really put a lot of words to it. Um, well, it's, you, you it's have. a special you, feeling. You really have. And, 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 you know, uh, it's, it's to me, it, as you said, you, you can look forward to the day each day because of that feeling. So feeling is important. And if you had some senses that, things weren't right or that people were kind of uh, not just mailing it in and so forth. You would feel that too. I mean, I've known oh, you and I, you, you, yeah. you feel the ups and downs of that school over the years, I'm financial, sure. you name it, the kinds of changes. So feeling is very important to you as a practitioner. Let's try judgment. You've had to make a lot of tough choices, not only now in this crisis, but over the mm -hmm. years, I believe 
that one of the many reasons you are in a senior leadership position is you are well regarded for your judgment and ask for it fairly commonly all the way from uh, a conflict with a couple of the kids to you know the big the big ticket issues where ethics come into play um how is how do you feel about judy the judger <laughs> in the best <laughs> sense of that <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, yeah, I think a lot of judgment calls come up. Um, some certainly mm -hmm. are, are easier than others. Again, if, if uh, you know, I'll go back to that servant leadership principle of putting people first. I think if you can, if you can really truly understand where people are coming from and uh, sift out you know, what, what needs to be accomplished, uh, I think you can do that in a very meaningful and, and caring manner uh, while still staying within the guardrails, if you would, of right, policy, right. procedure, right. regulatory, you know, types of things. So, and again, that, that comes down to being, you know, it's that humanity of, of mm -hmm. you know, being, being able to understand that. And that's not just me. I mean, that's, that's everyone here. I mean, I, I, I do think that, um, that people really understand, you know, the importance of doing the right things, you know, for the right reasons and, and, uh, and at the right time. So, yeah. 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 I, I know that you've cultivated in your professional development programs over the years, the responsibility and the, and the necessity to make judgments on the spot in the middle of a, of a, emerging situation on every staff person from those who, who care for the kids in the residences to the teachers. Uh, and so, and having a good set of policies and practices, part of it, but having a strong set of values really helps in judgment. Let's try the word sense, feeling judgment sense. That's the, that's Glen Holm as you sense it, you know, it's like almost, I'm guessing you can almost feel its heartbeat. And is it fluttering? Is it beating fast out of fear? What's your sense of the school at this point, moment? Uh, I think the, the, uh, my sense is, is that we have, you know, especially through COVID-19, we have honed our skills even more than we thought we, we could. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, you know, the heartbeat of the school is probably stronger than it ever has been. And we, we have new avenues and new, new opportunities uh, to educate uh, both families and, and students in, in a manner that, you know, is fitting for, for the time. So mm -hmm. my sense is, is that we're going to come out stronger for it. We've learned a lot more about ourselves and the, the grit and the and the, the tenacity that we need. Um, you know, there's eight, 10 hour days are really more like 12 and 14 hour days now because, you know, we're, we're dealing with things from the beginning of the morning until later on in the evening. And, and mm -hmm. uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, and it's okay uh, because we're getting it done and we're getting it done uh, in a way that is, you know, appropriate for each family. So we're personalizing it uh, to make sure that it's, it's being met with success. It tells me two things, at least about leadership in Judith uh, Cooper. One is that we all look to someone to see how their how they're emotion, how they're uh, presenting themselves when we're feeling um, loose or it's cut loose a little bit. And so they look to, we look to the leader and, and say, are we going to be okay? Are we going to make it? Are we losing more than we're gaining? Those are the kinds of things I think every one of us, when we're looking to any sort of leader these days, and what we're, what we're hoping is what I just heard you say and be, which is, yeah, I've, my, my sense of where we are and where we're headed is positive and strong. Mm -hmm. that's not just like saying the nice, the pretty words. So people will go, Oh, good. Because right. you know that certain things can still happen. So oh, the, sure. uh, yeah. So the other points, which I won't take you through every one of them, but it kind of fits together with what you just said, the sense of proportion, 
in balance and appropriateness is what you bring to the, not only to the day because you you work some nights that you're always but that sense of proportion balance and appropriateness is really crucial isn't it right now mm -hmm. uh, be, you know because you're not you're working in a, in a new realm virtual you're teaching kids uh, online as most teachers in the country are doing and yet you still have some kids whose families would prefer to have them there and in a more safe way than they right. could be otherwise. Right. So proportion is huge. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And balance. Yeah. And and so again, if you're feeling a good sense and you still see things that by using the creative technologies that you'll be using, that things are still Glen home. You haven't spiked out into some odd <laughs> wave uh, the school could go because one person says, "Hey, I think we should blah blah blah." I don't know. I, I don't know that that would happen, but it could. In many institutions, it could because people do get panicky. Balance, keeping those four o'clock hours light and personal, but in the morning, very serious, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and it, it, you have to have the balance. You have to, you know, uh, there's the serious times and then you really have to step back and find some silly times, right? Uh, because, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Uh, you know, you, you definitely need that, uh, that balance of, of just being able to just sit back for a moment and, and enjoy a good laugh uh, with one of your colleagues and say, yeah, you know, <laughs> who would have thought, <laughs> you know? So um, we... You know, our executive director, uh, Noah Noyes, has, has, has been probably the, the epitome of, of balance and appropriateness uh, with, with all of us. And I look at what's happening and think, hmm, you know, where would we be without, you know, uh, good leadership in general, you know? And, mm -hmm. uh, and yet he's taken it to a, a level even beyond what I would say is good leadership. It's, it's really, it's inspiring. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, we all have a responsibility to inspire one another. So, uh, you know, that lends to proportion and, and balance as well is being able to inspire people to, to have the, the, um, the authority and the uh, ability to to make decisions uh, in real time, and you know, work together and keep people informed, and and, and, and all of that has to happen. It, it just can't roll with one person. Um, so oh, no. it's not oh, no. just me. It's not just you know our direct care staff. It's not just our teachers or our social workers or our senior leadership, it, it's, it's really everyone. And uh, you just, I think, I think that goes back to servant leadership and, and, and part of what we try to educate all of our employees is in is that, you know, the world is happening very quickly and we all can't, your senior leadership just can't be in one place making all the decisions. There has to be no. decision-making throughout the entire uh, organization and if people don't feel that they can do that um, then it's not balanced right so right you have to have balance in 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 every area of the of the organization and uh, and you have to do that collectively and collaboratively and I think that that fits uh, our model for why our culture is so strong and and why we're kind of what we're calling Glen Home Strong right now through this COVID. Oh, I like that. We are Glen like Home that. Strong. We're doing this yeah. together, and it's it's been yeah. it's been quite an experience. Well, I'm delighted to know that your new executive uh, director is is taking you even to another level because you're you're done high in my esteem uh, under previous director Marianne. Campbell. But the word appropriateness is the last. It's feeling, judgment, sense, proportion, balance, and appropriateness. And what I'm saying in here in what you've just said is that there are times when it's most appropriate, appropriate to be inspired. Mm 
and to be inspiring. Mm-hmm. You know, the times call for it. Mm-hmm. And any one of you and I in my roles, <laughs> my limited roles now, have an opportunity to be inspired and to inspire. Or we can be just the opposite and shut down right. and, and go to the book and try to run a place like yours by a book or by, you know, fiat or by all the other ways that manager sometimes default when they can't be inspired or inspire. Mm-hmm. You, your kids inspire, your staff inspires, your parents and your donors and all the people who kept Ben home school alive and well all these years. And now this would have been the point. You would have been so visible <laughs> if you had dropped the ball and just said, ah, We'll see you. Can you imagine that? I can't imagine you, Judy, because you are Glen Home School as we're moving to the, you are Glen Home Schools and, and you are inspiring and inspired. Uh, can you imagine the op- opposite? Just saying, hey, you know, the, the budget's telling us we can't do this anymore. We can't be this anymore. Well, how can you imagine that? I, I don't even, it, it's a scary thought. It is. It is. Well, I, I, I will say, Dr. Ferron, that, that, that you have always inspired me, not only as a student, but well past our years at, at Central uh, Connecticut State University, but also, uh, you know, our phone calls that we have every now and then. I wish they were there were more, but uh, the times that we do, you know, I get off that phone and I and, and I feel inspired because you shared something with me. You're you're someone who's always teaching. Uh, you're always, uh, you know, creating that spark uh, of thought, and uh, and 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 you know, you, you take that spark and you you, you make something of it. And uh, and I think that we need each other, you know, to to create those sparks and to keep people uh, moving and and uh, thinking differently and and practicing. Uh, and, you know, continuing to, to uh, sharpen, you know, I, I, have, I love that, that quote, iron sharpens iron, and uh, I, I really, you know, you, you, you just, uh, you do feel that when you surround your pe- you, yourself with people who are, are uh, inspiring to others, you know, it, it, it does create that, that uh, spark, so so thank you for that. <laughs> well, I, th- I think it's it's mutual. Believe me, the the uh, iron and the iron. I I, I would say, in, as we're moving into the last moments or two, that when I first took my first organizational behavior course from Peter B. Vale back in the late '60s, I was a pretty good student, and I was doing quite a few, and I think important things about community school education. But by the end of that first course. Uh, I found there was some more in me that I wanted to be than even what I thought I was being pretty damn well. And that was Peter. That's what he, that was, it wasn't like he just like the, Oh, David, you're so special. No, not at all. It was the ideas Mm -hmm. and it was a way of opening up the ideas just like you and I have done over the years. It was saying, huh, what could we do with that? Uh, And it, and so I wanted that to be the hallmark of my teaching eventually when I went into full-time teaching in the mid eighties and, and, and I see the fruits of it uh, yeah, every well, day. You, you have done that. <laughs> well, and you know, you have the ideas. I have the ideas. Uh, last question. You took on the cause of bringing servant leadership to Glen home. Uh, or was that handed to you? Here, Judy, see if you can do something with this. Tell us a little bit about how that came about. Sure. So um, actually, our, our um, uh, president and CEO, Carl Clark of Devereaux, was the one who brought servant leadership to Devereaux. Um, and it was a, a concept that he thoroughly believed in. And he reached out to the Greenleaf Academy and uh, had all of the board of directors uh, trained in it. And then he wanted, he had a vision. He had a vision to make sure that that every Devereaux center across the United States was operating with servant leadership principles uh, in mind. And uh, 
So there was a, each, each uh, Devereaux Center uh, selected a, what they call a servant leadership champion, if you would, that was the title. <laughs> um, I can think of one right here on the screen. <laughs> and uh, so I, I was, so, not that, I mean, there were many people to choose from here, let me tell you, but um, mm -hmm. I was selected and, and certainly felt honored to, to take on that role of, of training folks here. And um, uh, so we were all trained under Green, uh, the Greenleaf Academy Mm -hmm. And uh, we went through a, a, a fairly extensive uh, week-long training uh, down in Pennsylvania, and uh, we all came together, and, and then we've brought it back to each center, and the senior vice presidents um, tag-teamed with each center champion uh, to uh, train all of our faculty, and uh, so we've just kept it going from there. Each champion now has a, a co-champion, if you would. So I have a, a gentleman, Bob Fapiano, who uh, I work closely with, along with our executive director, obviously. And uh, we also have servant leadership ambassadors uh, in our program. So we have about 15 uh, servant leadership ambassadors uh, and their employees that, that we feel truly uh, embody the servant uh, leadership principles uh, to a level that is is one where they can go and train and and you know model and also celebrate you know uh, various principles that take place you know as we do our work so so servant leadership as I said is really just an approach to how we do our work but yeah but it's been a it's been a really good initiative and uh, I, I definitely as I said it is just strengthened. I mean, there's so many servant leadership opportunities. We start our meetings with servant, you know, just take a servant leadership moment. Uh, and usually you find that, you know, somebody shares a, a special story uh, about putting someone else first or, or having a really good, making a really good judgment with leading with a moral authority. Use those mm -hmm. examples. And, uh, and that all goes back to your mission. And it supports yeah. your mission of why we yeah. exist, and so it, yeah. it, it's a it's a beautiful thing, quite frankly. And it's it's easy to work with because it really defines who you are, and yeah. it's uh, it's really strengthened us as a as a, a workforce and as a as a community. Um, so, yeah. It's sort of rounding out from my claim at the beginning of our conversation that Glen Home School is Judy Cooper. Judy Cooper is Glen Home School. I cannot imagine if they had sent you off to something that the larger corporation wanted you to bring back, that if you found that that went against your grain, if it went against your sensibilities, your judgment, your sense of proportion and balance, I think you probably would have said, well, I don't think so. That's not us. It's just the opposite. You found in the servant leadership initiative, something that resonated with you personally, because you are a servant leader, whether you had a title, a label on that or no. And I think it's been the way of your school from all the years that I've followed and admired your school. And I think you're yeah. also bringing that out in the kids. Mm -hmm. I think you've always asked them to think of the other and, and you're rewarded Right. You've had your token reward system for the behaviors that are that are allowing them to be more comfortable socially. All of that. So yeah. part yeah. and parcel. Mm -hmm. So I, I have I'm delighted to have the listeners meet someone who is so well suited <laughs> to being uh, her institution. So thank you, Judy. Well, thank you, Dave. I really appreciate it.